What's up everybody, Stone from Stick on the Ice here and welcome back to another video. So today, I'm going to be adding one legend to every single NHL team and see what happens to the league. So quickly, I'm going to go through all the legends that have been added to each team. At a 90 overall, Jeremy Roenick is going to try to save the Arizona Coyotes. I think we're all well aware that this team's going to need more than just one person. Join the Anaheim Ducks at a 93 overall with franchise potential is Timu Solani. Potential isn't really going to matter as I'm only doing this for one season. Boss is going to be adding some strength on defense with 93 overall Ray Bork. Buffalo Sabres are going to be adding 91 overall Dale Howarchuk, and Carolina is improving their defense with the addition of Paul Coffey. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. I'm trying to hit 3,000 subs by the end of the year, and every single sub helps a ton. And drop a like, I want to see if we can get 200 likes on this video. The Columbus Blue Jackets are getting better offensively with Rick Nash joining the team. Al McGinnis is helping the Calgary Flames by filling a spot on their top defensive pair. Chris Chelios will be doing something very similar joining the Chicago Blackhawks top defensive pair. Not only is Solani on the Ducks, but he's also going to be on the Colorado Avalanche. And I just want to clarify, I selected these players straight from the NHL alumni teams, and whoever is the highest overall that wasn't a goalie, I add to the team. And yes, Solani is on their alumni team even though he only played one season. The Dallas Stars are getting more offensive power bringing in 92 overall Brett Hall, while Mr. Hockey himself is returning to Detroit to get them back to greatness. The great one Wayne Gretzky is going to be teaming up with Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl in Edmonton. You're also going to see Gretzky on a few teams. Joe Nwendix coming to the Florida Panthers to give them some more forward depth. The LA Kings are getting themselves a fantastic player by the name of Wayne Gretzky. Not sure if you've heard of him before. Looking to help the Minnesota Wild get over the hump is going to be Owen Nolan. Montreal is getting back one of their faces of the franchise in John Bellevaux, while the New Jersey Devils are making their defense even stronger by adding Scott Niedermeyer. Joining the Nashville Predators is going to be legend Peter Forsberg. I know Forsberg only played 17 games with Nashville, but he's on the alumni team, so don't stone me for putting him on this team. Dennis Potvin is going to be returning to the Islanders, and Wayne Gretzky makes his third team join the New York Rangers. Sergei Gonchar is teaming up with Thomas Shabbat on Ottawa's top D-line. Helping the Philadelphia Flyers D-line is going to be Chris Pronger. Pittsburgh's adding another superstar to the team with the addition of Mario Lemieux. So Seattle, of course, isn't going to have anyone to add, but we're just going to hype up Jaden Schwartz. Team Mussolini is also being added to his third team, joining the San Jose Sharks. St. Louis is going to be adding Blues legend Wayne Gretzky to the team, while Tampa Bay is adding Dennis Savard to create some more forward depth. Frank Mahovlik is coming to the Toronto Maple Leafs to give them some more forward depth, because that's exactly what they need. One half of the Sedins is returning, with Daniel coming to the team. Similar to Seattle, Vegas doesn't have a player, so we're just going to hype up Jack Eichel. And for the fourth time so far, Team Mussolini is going to be joining another team, and that team is the Winnipeg Jets. Finally, Mike Gardner is going to finish off the Legends by joining the Washington Capitals. Now that we know which legend has been added to every single team, comment down below who do you think is going to lead the league in scoring, and which team is going to have the best record. Personally, I'm all in on the Oilers with Wayne Gretzky and he's going to lead the team in scoring. When the season came to an end, the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to finish with a league best 58-19-5 record. I guess the trio of Malkin, Crosby, and Mario was just too much to handle. The Oilers weren't too far behind finishing second with a 49-25-8 record. Even without a legend, Seattle's still going to be able to make the playoffs. Same with Vegas as they finished with a 44-35-3 record. The final team that's going to be clinching a playoff spot is going to be the Winnipeg Jets with a 40-36-6 record. And finishing dead last in the league, which should be no surprise whatsoever, is the Arizona Coyotes. This team is just down bad. Now we're going to take a quick look at how all these legends perform. Solani is going to lead the Ducks in points with 16 goals and 50 assists for 66 points. Jeremy Roenix recording 66 points consisting of 21 goals and 45 assists. Even as defenseman Ray Bork is producing offensively with 11 goals and 45 assists. Dale Howardchuk is leading the Buffalo Sabres in points with 77 in 82 games. Al McGinnis was extremely disappointing, recording only 34 points. Like, what are you doing, bro? Unlike Al, Paul Coffey was dominating as a defenseman, scoring 90 points in 82 games. Chris Chelios was also doing his thing, scoring 8 goals and 68 assists for 76 points. Colorado's team Mussolini was doing better than the Ducks version, scoring 75 points, which is good enough for second on the team at points. Rick Nash was also doing his thing in Columbus, recording 60 points, consisting of 31 goals and 29 assists. Brett Hall was a massive help to Dallas's offense, recording 38 goals and 45 assists for 83 points. Gordie Howe is a bit of a disappointment, especially if you're comparing him to the career simulation version, scoring only 64 points. Wayne Gretzky from the Oilers was unstoppable, with 57 goals and 52 assists for 109 points. Joe was a massive help for the Panthers, as he's scoring a team-high 82 points, consisting of 31 goals and 51 assists. 
Gretzky on the Kings wasn't as dominant, scoring only 77 points. Owen Nolan had himself a great year, scoring 29 goals and 46 assists for 75 points. John Beliveau was terrific for Montreal, scoring 88 points. And of course, Nashville legend Peter Forsberg was also great, potting 29 goals and 77 helpers. New Jersey saw a lot of offense from their defense, with Scott Niedermeyer recording a team-high 72 points. Dennis Potvin was also dominating as a defenseman, scoring 14 goals and 58 assists for 72 points. Gretzky from the Rangers was fantastic, recording 48 goals while picking up 44 helpers for 92 points. Sergei Gonchar put up some decent numbers with Ottawa, scoring 41 points, while Chris Pronger wasn't much better, recording only 39. Mario Lemieux was proving he's one of the best players in the league, scoring 53 goals and 48 assists for 101 points. Team Mussolini was also putting up great numbers of 15 goals and 63 assists for 78 points. Seattle legend James Schwartz was fantastic, scoring 59 points, while Blues legend Wayne Gretzky was also amazing, potting 44 goals while picking up 45 assists for 89 points. Tampa was also looking stronger offensively, with Dennis Savard scoring 81 points. It was a similar situation in Toronto with Frank scoring 83 points. Daniel Sedin did what he could without his brother, scoring 27 goals while picking up 47 helpers for 74 points. Vegas legend Jack Eichel was fantastic, scoring 37 goals while picking up 35 assists. Mike Gardner was also providing some offense to Washington by scoring 54 points. And finally, Team Mussolini of the Winnipeg Jets is scoring a very disappointing 52 points. So we'll take a quick look at the top point scorers from the entire league and it should be no surprise the guy at the top is the great one, Wayne Gretzky. One thing I do want to mention though, is even though we had all these legends, there's still a lot of current players in the top 9. So now that we've reached the playoffs, I want you guys to comment down below. Who do you think is going to win the Stanley Cup? I'm going to go all in with the Edmonton Oilers. I don't think anyone's going to be able to slow that offense down. Well, my prediction went down the drain very fast as Winnipeg would take down the Oilers in six games. The second round matchups are consisting of Dallas versus Vegas, Winnipeg versus Vancouver, Penguins versus Islanders, and Lightning versus Rangers. Once that round came to an end, we were down to just four teams. The Dallas Stars are taking on the Winnipeg Jets, and we have a battle of New York with the Rangers taking on the Islanders. After two hard-fought battles, we've reached the Stanley Cup final with the Winnipeg Jets taking on the New York Islanders. And when the cup final came to an end, the Winnipeg Jets would take the Islanders down in six games. The team that clinched the final playoff spot just won the cup. That makes sense. Here's a quick look at the top postseason scores with Brett Hall in first, followed by Wayne Gretzky and Matthew Barzell. The awards had a ton of different winners. Gretzky took home the Art Ross and Hart, Paul Coffey won the Norris, while Gretzky won his third award in the Lady Bang, Lucas Raymond took home the Calder, Connor Halbuck won the Conn Smythe, Vasilevsky took home the Vesna, Carey Price won the William Jennings, New York's Wayne Gretzky won the Frank Selke, and then the Oilers' Wayne Gretzky won another two awards, taking home the Ted Lindsay and Rocket Richard Trophy. So if you enjoyed this video, I definitely recommend checking the one out on screen, and if you haven't already, make sure to drop a like and subscribe.